Foley catheter balloon deflation steps. 1. Cut off the inflation valve to let water drain. 2. Insert a central line guide wire into the inflation channel to open the channel. 3. Insert a 22 gauge central line catheter over the guide wire and then remove guide wire to allow water to drain. 4. Inject 10 milliliters of mineral oil into the inflation channel to dissolve the balloon. 5. Initiate consultation for percutaneous or endoscopic balloon puncture. I'm able to aspirate after advancing. We're going to go ahead and cut the line. Okay. So now, and it is. It's Just drain in. Foley catheters have two channels. On cross section, the smaller diameter channel is the inflation port. The larger channel is the urinary port. Foley catheter malfunctions. Different parts of the Foley catheter can malfunction and be a potential cause for the balloon not deflating. The inflation valve can malfunction and prevent the removal of the balloon's fluid. The inflation channel can be damaged by clamping, crushing, or kinking. Debris or sediment can block the balloon inflation channel. See Black Arrow. Crystallized solute can result when fluids other than sterile water are used to fill the balloon channel. Next step then would basically to be to take a guide wire. And I took this guide wire actually from a from a, a small bowel feeding tube. So we're gonna advance that guide wire. And it is it is a tight fit, but it is it is advancing. Yeah, in general you're supposed to use central line guide wires. Right. Again, this came out of a feeding tube. It's kind of a woven wire, so Step 2. Insertion of a lubricated guide wire. After the valve mechanism has been severed, a lubricated fine gauge guide wire from a central line kit is passed through the inflation channel. The goal is to relieve any obstruction or to allow the balloon to drain by allowing the fluid to exit along the wire. Depending on the guide wire used, it may be possible to burst the balloon with the guide wire. If this step fails, the guide wire remains in place and is used for the next step. Step 3. Place a 22 gauge catheter over the guide wire. If the stylet technique is not successful, a well lubricated 22 gauge central venous catheter can be inserted over the pre placed guide wire. Once the catheter tip is advanced far enough to be in the balloon, the guide wire is removed, and the balloon should drain. If the balloon does not drain, the guide wire can be reinserted, and the catheter's position adjusted. Step 4 Mineral Oil. Various chemicals have been used to dissolve Foley catheter balloons and some have caused complications such as chemical cystitis, bladder contractures, and hematuria. Consequently, mineral oil, which is less toxic, is the only substance recommended for this procedure. Success rates up to 85-90% to with no adverse effects have been reported. Approximately 10 milliliters of mineral oil can be injected through the inflation port. If the desired effect does not occur in 15 minutes, another 10 milliliters of mineral oil can be inserted, and expected results should occur within 30 minutes. In general, if chemicals are used to dissolve the balloon, the bladder should be filled with 200 milliliters of sterile water or normal saline to dilute the chemical after the balloon ruptures. If this technique is successful, the catheter should be inspected carefully for missing fragments after its removal. If there is any possibility of retained balloon fragments, cystoscopy is recommended for bladder evaluation and fragment removal. Step 5. Balloon Rupture Techniques Foley catheter balloons can also be punctured percutaneously using transabdominal, transvaginal, transperineal, and transrectal approaches. These methods are more invasive and should be performed with the assistance of a urologist or radiologist using sonographic guidance. Step 6. Endoscopic Balloon Puncture if the previous techniques are unsuccessful, a urologist should be consulted for endoscopic balloon puncture. The endoscopic procedure allows direct visualization and inspection of the bladder for injury as well as removal of retained fragments. 40 ml. There we go. There we go. All right, so I want to see if there's fragments of any kind that flew off here and where did you find this on the ground okay so so actually this this then was the balloon part and so that would be a fragment that you know that came that actually came off here 
and that's actually going to be, that'd be a fragment that would be left in the bladder. Caveat, do not rupture balloons by hyperinflation. Rupture of the balloon by hyperinflation with water or saline is strongly discouraged. Bladder injury may occur and retained fragments of the balloon are almost guaranteed. Cystoscopy may be necessary to examine the bladder for injury and to remove any retained fragments. Remember, these procedures can be painful and stressful to the patient. Be sure that the patient is sufficiently medicated for pain and provided with sedation medications as needed.